I already did the intro. So now it is time for um, Separate Enac to say a few words. Okay, go for it, Claudia. We cannot hear you. Cla yes. Claudia, do you, do you copy me now? Do you copy? The regional emergency agency in Central America. We work with her closely and her team. She's in Republican, the, the Dominican Republic now. Hello, Claudia. Hello, hello, Emiliano. Hello, I don't, I'm not sure if it's time to my uh, interview. Yes, unless Claudio has something to say. No, no problem. All is okay. We are all, all, already over YouTube, so let's go for it, Claudia. You're ah, welcome. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Greetings from Central America and the Dominican Republic. We are together with the National Director of Disaster Management Meteor Entity of Dominican Republic, Juan Salas, and their staff. Josh, we thank you for the envelope support you are giving to our region, which is one of the most exposed and vulnerable to disasters. We are relying on the use of the science and technology to strengthen our capacities for prevention and response. And we hope that the students appreciate this space and take advantage of what you can teach us today. Our policy calls on us to give safe and resilient territories to future generations. For this reason, we are pleased to be part of this initiative together with the World Bank, the NASA Disaster Program and Disaster Fighters to be able to interact with the children and south of the schools who will be the, the decision makers and those who will be involved in response to emergencies in the future. This is an excellent opportunity for all of us to learn about early warning systems and comprehensive disaster risk management through innovative in initiatives from a space observation and creative ways to better prepare and respond to disaster solutions. Jan, you are 400 kilometers from Earth, but close to us, to us in our monitoring efforts. We are happy to speak for the very first time with an astronaut who is in space and how they can collaborate with the use of science, technology, and Earth observations to better prepare ourselves and our countries to minimize the impact of disasters and save lives. Thank you again for all the support, Josh and students for our Central America and the Caribbean. We send you greetings to the space. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Claudia. Um, thank you for being here today. This is truly a regional collaboration. And I'd like to pass the floor to Andrea from Sidima, the Caribbean Regional Emergency Agency. We also work with her, her and her team closely. So thank you for being here, Andrea. Thank you so much, Emmy. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm wearing my disaster fighter shirt. <laughs> yes. So when I was a little girl at school, much of my educational experience was centered on the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. In this technological age, Sidema is proud to add value to the traditional education approach by bringing real life experiences into the classroom through the disaster fighters campaign which has reached over 16 million people in the region. Education today must meet the challenges for tomorrow. Sidema therefore advances a comprehensive disaster management agenda because we recognize that for nations to strive, protect lives, livelihoods, the most vulnerable and precious like our children, we must manage the risk we face in this increasingly complex hazard environment Sincere thanks to our astronauts from the International Space Station for helping us inspire this next generation of meteorologists, scientists, policymakers, disaster risk managers, and prepared citizens of Latin America and the Caribbean. Go, disaster fighters, go! Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andrea, and you and your team, and Keith. Um, for all the support and for being here today. I'd like to pass the floor to David Borges at NASA. Thank you, David, and also Ricardo for all the team, all the support that we got from NASA to make this possible. Also, Carlo Fontanot, who helped us a lot. So 
I'm glad to have you here today, David. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Emiliano. Emiliano. And, and yes, yes, again, again thanks, thanks to my colleague, colleague Ricardo, who does, does so much work to, to bring these communities, communities together. But, but uh, uh, yes, good day, everybody. My, my name is David Borges. Borges. I am the Associate Program Manager of the NASA Disasters Program, and I am very excited and honored to be able to be here with all of you today. And I must say uh, that I would love to, to figure out how I can also get a Disaster Fighters t-shirt at some point in the future, because they look amazing. But, but our mission here at NASA, NASA is to explore the unknown in air and space and push innovations for the benefit of all humanity and inspire the world through new discoveries. At our NASA Disasters Program, we apply the latest science developments across our entire NASA agency. And this includes working directly with the astronauts living on the International Space Station that we will all hear from very soon. Our program and, and our entire community acts like a bridge or like translators between the science community on one side and all of the agencies and communities attending this meeting right now and in your own neighborhoods that work day in and day out very hard to respond to all kinds of disasters around an entire world with the primary purpose of saving lives. We map floods when hurricanes hit our coastlines, when fires threaten our homes, we model volcanoes when they erupt, and many, many other hazards all around the world every day. All of our NASA science and information is completely free and open. You and your families can learn more about how science can help save lives and limit impacts to our, to our homes and communities. And finally, I just want everyone here to explore all of the opportunities available to you to get involved directly with NASA from open trainings to available internships, there are many opportunities. You are all of our futures. And we needed all of the help that we can get to inform everyone around the world how we can better understand disasters and collectively become more resilient across all of our communities. Again, thank you so much for including us today. And we look forward to the rest of the agenda. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Uh, I promise we'll get you a t-shirt um, and we, we learned so much. We're working with your team and NASA about satellite monitoring of uh, natural hazards and, and disasters and, and this idea of uh, driving that conversation towards that observation of natural hazards was um, uh, a result of, the, of those conversations with your team. So thank you for that. Um, so I guess that we have two more minutes. Uh, Brian, you let me know when you just uh, when we pass the floor to you, the final thing that I'd like to say um, is that when we started Disaster Fighters, we, we thought of this idea that we are all a team, uh, all the community uh, getting prepared to, for disasters. And we, this idea that we are all a team to understanding, to learn together, to respond better, um, is the spirit of this campaign. So the, the, the reason for this activity to do to, today is to keep learning together and as a team getting prepared and making the most of this unique opportunity of learning how the natural hazards and natural events are observed and studied from the satellite um, from uh, orbiting the earth so we're and, really looking we, forward to to do that nancy yes we are going to share a video um please Go brian on. yes shall we play the video brian yeah, that would be great. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Peake, and welcome aboard the International Space Station, where we're orbiting Earth 16 times every day. One of the most rewarding activities that some astronauts undertake on orbit is to talk to schools using the space station's ham radio. Now, these are events that are planned by ARIS, which is a worldwide group of amateur radio volunteers who are dedicated to introducing young people and students to science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now this is the equipment here in the Columbus Laboratory which consists of a handheld radio, a headset and we also have a ham video unit. Now as the International Space Station orbits above your location a radio link is established between the ISS and your school. Now, because we're traveling at nearly 18,000 miles per hour, 
which is an incredible 25 times the speed of sound. We usually get about 9 or 10 minutes of good radio contact before losing the signal. So about five minutes before the scheduled start time of the contact, I come into the Columbus Laboratory and configure the radio so that I'm on the correct channel. And sometimes I'll set up a ham video too. Just before the predicted time, I begin to start calling the school using the standard amateur radio calling techniques. For example, if the call sign of your school was GB4 Fun, I would say Golf Bravo 4, Foxtrot Uniform November. This is Golf Bravo 1, Sierra Sierra listening and standing by. Now at your school, the radio operator will be listening for my call, but may also transmit and try to call me as well. You'll probably have a much more powerful transmitter on the ground than we have up here on board, so I'm likely to hear you before you hear me. Then, once we can hear each other, then comes the best bit, which is actually talking to the students and answering the questions. Once I've answered all the questions, we use the remaining time to say goodbye to each other and end the connection. I'll then spend a few minutes configuring the radio back into a rebroadcast mode and then I'll go back to my day job, which is of course doing science on board the International Space Station. ARIS is a brilliant opportunity for astronauts to talk to school pupils. It's really rewarding to hear how excited the students are when they're talking to somebody up here in space and it's a true privilege to be able to inspire our next generation of scientists and engineers through amateur radio. Hello everyone, this is Brian Jackson, Victor Echo 6, Juliet Bravo Juliet in Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. I'll be your amateur radio moderator for today. Through the help of amateur radio volunteers and the crew on the International Space Station, we hope to soon establish ham radio contact with the ISS as it flies more than 350 kilometers above the Earth towards Italy. This is all accomplished through ARIS, amateur radio on the International Space Station program. The ISS is currently flying over the Atlantic Ocean on a north southwest to northeast heading, whizzing along at 28,000 kilometers an hour. This contact will be performed using the Amateur Radio Telebridge Network, a worldwide network of amateur radio ground stations that enable students to contact the ISS. What makes this contact unique is that we've gathered together these students from 10 different countries via Zoom. These students are in a true multi-point telebridge as they are connected back to the ground station via Zoom as well. ARIS is a consortium of ham radio volunteers from nine nations that develop and operate the amateur radio station on the International Space Station. Some members of ARIS are the American Radio Relay League, the worldwide AMSAT Radio Amateur Satellite Corporations, the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and the Russian Federal Space Agency. The amateur radio ground station that will soon establish contact with the ISS is India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta in Casala Montferrato, Italy, operated by Claudio Ariotti. Thanks for helping us out today, Claudio. We have about four minutes until contact time. Our contact today is with Josh Casada, Kilo India 5, Charlie Romeo Hotel, who will be operating OR4 ISS on board the International Space Station. Joss will be talking to students at schools in eight countries of the Caribbean and Central America. These students sent questions related to disaster and natural hazard monitoring, such as hurricanes, volcano eruptions, tsunamis, coastal erosions, and climate change, as well as improving disaster preparedness in the region. The ARIS mentor for this contact is Steve McFarland, Victor Echo 3, Tango Bravo Delta. At this time, I'd like to ask Emilio rodriguez Nush to please briefly tell us about disaster fighters and the students who are taking part in today's contact. Go ahead, Emiliano. Hello, everyone. This activity is part of the Disaster Fighters Campaign, which is a regional communications initiative to improve disaster preparedness and build resilience in the Caribbean and Central America. This is an opportunity for kids from 26 countries to learn about natural hazard research and monitoring as seen from the unique perspective of an astronaut in the International Space Station. More than 300 questions were submitted by schools in the region. So in this live conversation, 
Today's students from Costa Rica, Panama, St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, Dominican Republic, St. Kitts and Nevis, Cayman Island and Trinidad and Tobago are representing their communities in all those countries. So a big thank you to the participating schools, to all the teachers and all the students who sent questions from so many countries. Thank you, Sedima. Thank you, Sepredenac, NASA and the World Bank and ARIS for their support. <laughs> Thank you, Emiliano. Claudio, before the contact begins in a couple of minutes, please tell us about your IK1 SLD ham radio station, where you are and how you'd like to handle today's conversation. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian, for uh, your presentation. Briefly, our telebridge station is, uh, uh, our telebridge station is, said, uh, is uh, located in Casale Monferrato Airport uh, in northwest of Italy, 100 kilometers from uh, Turin and Milan. With uh, me today as operators, uh, operator are Fabio and uh, uh, Alessio, and uh, a member of our telebridge uh, station. When T minus 30 seconds, I'll go to call uh, Josh uh, aboard the ISS operating today with Oscar Romeo 4 in the Sierra Sierra call sign. And as soon as the signal will be loud and clear, I will invite the student to say, to start with first question. And uh, for uh, the student, uh, please don't forget to say over because this is a very important thing to coordinate uh, the conversation between us and the astronaut. Now I see the International Space Station approaching to Italy. We have uh, one minute and 10 seconds to AOS. So microphone back to you, Brian. Thanks, Claudio. Just a reminder to everybody in the audience, even though Eris has done this more than a thousand times, what we're still doing continues to be an experiment. We can never tell the results either positive or negative until the experiment is over. Students listen very closely for the astronaut to say over. That's your cue to start your question. And don't forget to say over at the end. There's about 30 seconds until the station should be coming up over the coast in Italy. Claudio, it's all yours. Good luck to everybody. Okay, Brian. So we have 24 seconds. Raul, well, we'll get ready. Okay, I am calling now. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. This is India, Kilo 1, Sierra, Lima Delta, Telebridge, Ground Station, calling for a scheduled Aris contact. Uh, do you copy, Josh? Over. Oscar Romo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. This is India, Kilo 1, Sierra, Lima Delta, Telebridge, Ground Station, calling for a scheduled Aris contact. Uh, do you copy, Josh? Over. Hello, India, Kilo 1, Sierra, Lima Delta. This is Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Okay, Oscar Romeo 4, India Sierra Sierra, IK1 SLD. Good, uh, good afternoon, Josh. Uh, your signal is loud and clear. If you are ready, I am going to pass the microphone to the first student. Over. I have you loud and clear, and I'm ready for questions. Over. Okay, go ahead, uh, Raul. Raul from Panama. What is the International Space Station over? Hello. Well, the International Space Station is the largest spacecraft uh, that we've ever built. It is a floating laboratory. It's about the size of a football field, about, about 100 meters across. And in the part that we live in, it's about the size of a six-bedroom house. The cool thing about this house is we can use the ceiling and the floor and the walls to do all our experiments and to run all our systems and actually to sleep. And we're traveling at over 17,000 miles an hour. We're just about 250 miles above you. And in fact, just a couple minutes ago, we passed over South America and we'll be over St. Lucia in less than an hour and a half. Santiago? Santiago from Costa Rica. 
How do you sit? Well, hanging from the bottom of the space station is something that looks like half of a soccer ball. And each half of each face of that soccer ball is a beautiful window that we can look out and see our beautiful planet. And so we love to spend a little time there whenever we can because the view of our planet is really breathtaking. And I'll tell you, when I'm in there, it is never, ever boring. Uh, there's no part of this planet that I don't absolutely love looking at. Over. Willow from Antigua and Barbuda. If a hurricane is happening, can you see it in space? Over. In fact, we can see hurricanes from space. Uh, we are only 250 miles above you and racing around the planet. So we can see these big storms. We can see them uh, from uh, the cupola. We can take uh, high resolution photography and we can see when they're coming. Uh, we have not had any uh, to track since we've been up here on the space station for the last two months, uh, but we did have Hurricane Ian come through uh, just before our launch and we actually delayed our launch from Florida uh, while everyone uh, uh, tried to make better after that storm. Over. Lucia? Lucia from the Dominican Republic. How long did you study to become an astronaut? Over. Hello, Lucia. Uh, in fact, I feel like I've been studying my whole life to be an astronaut. And I don't know that I'm ever going to stop uh, because I really, really enjoy learning new things. Um, in my previous life, I was a physicist. I studied physics. And then I became a pilot in the US Navy. And then eventually a test pilot before I became an astronaut. And so the best thing about this job is uh, there's always something new to learn, uh, whether it is uh, how to live and, and work in space and get better at that, or if it's helping our researchers do their experiments and learn new things about their fundamental science that they're doing. Over. Gabriel? Gabriel from, Gabriel from Cayman Islands. What do you do in space? Over. Hello, Gabriel from the Cayman Islands. Well, I'll tell you, uh, every day is different up here. Some days uh, we're doing research and helping run those experiments that we were just talking about, and those experiments go from everything from biology to physics to research on the human body, or sometimes we're doing maintenance on the space station. Sometimes we have to fix things that are broken or, or improve systems that we have uh, already. And sometimes we have to do even more adventurous things like go crapple and catch a cargo vehicle with a robotic arm or go outside and do a spacewalk. And in fact, uh, just last week we did a spacewalk and we built some new apparatus that we can put a solar array on. And we're going to go put solar arrays on next week. Over. Dana from St. Lucia. Do you study and measure climate change from space? Over. Well, we can certainly take photography uh, from the cupola, like we were talking about, and we can see the effects of climate change uh, from time to time, uh, depending on where we're looking and what we're looking for. But primarily, we have instruments that are mounted on the outside of the space station that are used uh, to uh, collect data on the planet itself, whether that be surface temperature or atmospheric content. Um, and that helps us uh, give information back to the researchers and the scientists to help us understand where we are, where we're headed, and what we can do about it. Over. Leanne from Antigua and Barbuda. When a volcanic eruption happens, can you see the effects from space? Over. Hi, Leanne. We absolutely can. Uh, I have not seen a volcano yet, uh, but uh, I'm not always in the cupola. But in fact, we did have an astronaut a couple years ago who just happened to be in there looking out and saw a, volca a volcano erupt. And he actually made a call down to Alaska, to the Alaskan uh, Volcanic Observatory, and let them know what he saw. And they didn't even know it was erupting yet. So yes, we can absolutely see volcanoes from up here. Over. Benenaya from St. Lucia. What are the impacts of space hurricanes and does it affect us here on Earth? 
Over. Well, uh, space hurricanes are a little different than the hurricanes uh, we're familiar with on Earth. Uh, you know, the hurricanes on Earth are based on water and rain and pressure differences and even the rotation of the Earth. Uh, the space hurricanes tend to come from energetic electrons that are coming from the sun, and then they collide with oxygen and nitrogen in our atmosphere, and that's what makes those beautiful colors the greens and the blues of the aurora. And that's actually some really, really neat quantum mechanics that makes that happen. Um, and sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes the magnetic field of the Earth is such that it actually makes a swirl of that aurora and makes it look like a hurricane. Uh, but the good news is uh, that there's no threat there. It does sometimes maybe affect our satellites a little bit. But uh, I'm, I haven't seen a uh, space hurricane yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for sure. Over. Vasti? Vasti from Cayman Islands. How close does a meteorite have to pass to affect Earth? Over. Hello, Vasti. Uh, well, I'm a physicist, so I have to tell you that everything that has mass pulls on anything else that has mass. So the Earth is pulling on the International Space Station right now, but just a little bit, the International Space Station is pulling back on the Earth. So um, that is to say that every uh, meteoroid is pulling just a little bit on the Earth, and the Earth is pulling on it. But we don't tend to worry about them unless they're closer than 4.5 million miles from the Earth. And if they are closer than that, they have to be bigger than 500 feet across for us to be concerned. Otherwise, they're probably just going to burn up in the atmosphere, and uh, if they don't burn up, they're just going to be a tiny little meteorite that make it back to the planet. Over. Josh from San Nevis. Do other planets have volcanoes? Over. Hello, Josh. Yes, uh, there are other uh, planets with volcanoes. Um, we see a lot of old, dead volcanoes around the solar system. Uh, in fact, I think it's just Earth and maybe Jupiter's moon Io that have active volcanoes right now. Um, we think that there might be some on Venus uh, and maybe on another one of uh, Jupiter's moons, Europa, but we're not quite sure. But yes, there are definitely volcanoes throughout the solar system. Over. One minute. On behalf of Haiyan from Trinidad and Tobago, what can I do to make sea levels stop rising? Over. I think you just did it. I think the very first thing we need to do is ask what we can do. Uh, we are absolutely in a spot where we're affecting uh, the planet, and we hope, we wish that wasn't true, but wishing that it's not true doesn't help us solve the problem. So I think that humans are smart enough and resourceful enough to fix it, and if we're all together, we can actually solve this very hard problem. Over. Christian? I'm Christian from Panama. What does the moon look like off close? Over. Great question. Well, the Orion spacecraft can tell you right now. If you go Google it, there are some incredible images of the moon that we've taken just this week after we launched an unmanned spacecraft that's going around the moon. I encourage you to go take a look. Those pictures are breathtaking. Over. Nicole? Nicole from we have a loss of signal from Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just shared a moment in history. Amateur radio station India Kila 1 Sierra Lima Delta at Casala Monferrato. Operated by Claudio Ariotti, IK-1 SLD, contacted Josh Casada, KI-5 CRH aboard the International Space Station. Josh spoke with students at schools in eight countries of the Caribbean and Central America. Congratulations to all students involved, including those in the audience. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Eris would, Eris would like to thank Steve McFarland, VE3 TBD, for his mentorship. Now for the international volunteer team of ARIS, including the amateur radio satellite corporations around the world, the American Radio Relay League, 
the CSA, ESA, JAXA, NASA, and Roscosmos. This is Brian Jackson, amateur radio operator, VE6JBJ, sending my greetings to all of you in amateur radio terms. 7-3 to all of you, best wishes. Congratulations, everybody. We are done. That was brilliant. Great, great, Emiliano, and all involved in the contract. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Nicole and Kai. I, I know that you want to ask a question. We knew that it was, the time was limited, but thank you for being here and for being part of the team. Next time, you will have your opportunity as well. Thank you for everyone that made that possible. It was really, really moving to all of us and really inspiring to have you all connected from so many countries to learn together about natural hazards. I'm still thinking about all the answers that um, Josh gave us back. I think we're, we have a lot to discuss um, about, what, about his answers and I hope that you can continue the conversation in the classrooms. Congrats, Emiliano. Steve here in Ottawa, Canada. Great job, Brian. Great job, team. Really well done. Congratulations, everybody. Thanks for a great event. Look forward to doing it again sometime, hopefully soon. Thank you, Brian, for making it possible. Thank you, Steve, all the team at NASA, Ricardo, David, and Carlos, um, and Sirima. Thank you, Andrea, Sepredenac. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you to all the Republican Dominican team over there particularly to the teachers. I know that it's been a big effort to help us coordinate this and all the difference with the timings and connecting to the Zoom and the YouTube. This was yeah. really, really impressive. Rodri and Nancy, um, behind the scenes, you did an amazing job with all the, all the transmission. Uh, Jose has been doing the translations. Gracias, Jose. Thank you so much for helping us. Also, Ana and Seprena helping us with uh, streaming this um, Spanish version of this transmission. What else? Am I missing anyone? I think this is a lovely team and I hope that we can continue doing these conversations and, and explorations together. Thank you, the team from San, from San Lucia. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Santiago, Diana, Basti, Josh, Raul, Lucia, Christian, Gabriel, Willow, Leanne, Kai, Nicole, um, Benanaya, all of you, it's been really, really, your, your questions have been really amazing. So the, you helped us learn a lot. I learned the concept by a Maori teacher who taught me the, the concept of ACCO, which is reciprocal learning. Like um, I'm learning from all of you as well. Like it's not only the teachers, but and the students learning and also the teachers are learning in this experience. So um, hopefully we all learn something new today. So I guess this is it. Um, I guess that we'll, maybe all the kids can open their microphone. We'd like to hear your voice and say thank you and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please send us your videos and photos, anything that you have, any material that you do, any audio activities. Please share it so that we can see it online. <laughs> Pura vida, gracias. Claudia, did you want to connect someone of your team there to say hi? We are, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so we're going to formally end the transmission now and close the window. Thank you, Claudio. Sorry. Thank you, Claudio, and all the, the, the team in Italy. Okay. okay, Emiliano, thank you to you. Thank you to Nancy and uh, Steve, Brian, and all the, the, the students involved in the event. And we hope to collaborate with you again in the future. <laughs> ciao, ciao from Italy. E ciao e grazie. Ciao, Italy. Grazie. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you, you did an amazing job. Thank you for the connection. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Recording stopped. Soon.